Hey guys, welcome to another Whiteboard Thursday. Today I have a very frequently asked question in small and big companies alike, which is if you have three sorted arrays, how do you find the intersection or the common elements between the three arrays in the most efficient way possible? And at the end, I also tell you which problems I'm going to cover next week. So you can get a head start, try it yourself before you look at the solution. So let's get right into it. So these are the three input arrays and they're all three sorted. Yep. So in this case, the output would be whatever are the elements that are common in each of these arrays. So mm -hmm. let me just write that down over here. The output mm -hmm. will also be an array, I'm assuming, right? And um, in this case, it'll have 6 and 13, right? Correct. Actually, I don't see any repeated elements in here. So is it possible that, let's say, there are two 6s in all three of these arrays, and the output is 6, 6, 13? Yep. The repeated element will be repeated in the output as well. Okay. Perfect. So let's see how we can approach this. I will somehow need to keep track of my index. So I'll need to iterate on all three of these arrays at once. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't really make sense for me to have nested loops. You know, that would be uh, a very inefficient algorithm. Yeah. So let's say I'm iterating on all three of these at once. And in that case, I'll need to keep track of uh, the index where I'm at on all three of these at once, you know, same time. So let's say the index uh, for array 1, I name it as x, for array 2, I name it as y, and for array 3, I name it c. All three of these are 0 right now, so as you can see, they're at the start of the arrays. So now I will be inside of like a for loop or a while loop, you know, and I'll be trading till I reach end of bounds for any of these arrays. Mm -hmm. Now let's say the first condition is that I check whether the value at x, y, and z's are all the same. If mm -hmm. that's the case, then I'll push them to my results, all right? Mm -hmm. And if, that, if that's not the case, then I'll see that, okay, if x is less than y, then I need to increment. Or the value at x is less than the value at y, then I'll need to increment x. Yeah. So that's the case over here right now. Mm -hmm. So let me just do that. Let me increment x. Now I'll do the same thing. I'll see if the values are um, the same. They're mm -hmm. not, right? So I'll see is x less than y, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Then I will need to see is y less than z. Mm -hmm. And over here, that is the case, yep. right? So I'll say, okay, let me increment y. Mm -hmm. So basically I want to see um, at each if statement or each condition, whether one thing is less than the other. I, I, I basically want to see, okay, is S, x less than y? Now I'll see if y is less than z. At the end, if these two are not met, then it automatically implies that z is less than x and y. Yep. Right? So in this case, I increment x, right? Mm -hmm. This case, I increment y. Mm -hmm. And if none of these are satisfied, then I increment z. Mm -hmm. Right? So now, none of these are satisfied, right? The, this is an equality. So x mm -hmm. is not less than y, y is not less than z. And so even the three are not equal. And the three are not equal. So the first condition is not met. So I'll say, okay, let me increment z. Right now, it's the same thing, same scenario. Z is less than x and y. So I increment z again. Obviously, we're checking if all three are equal at every at every loop. Mm -hmm. Now all three are equal, so we'll push that into the results array, mm -hmm. and we'll increment all three of the indices, mm -hmm. right? So the x will be over here, y will be over here, and z will be over here, and we'll start the process all over again. So this will also catch any repeated elements. Yeah. Because let's say there is a 6 over here as well, right? Mm -hmm. And as we've incremented it, in the next loop we'll check for equality again, mm -hmm. and if all three of them are sixes, mm -hmm. then we'll push them again to the results array. Yeah. So if this looks good, I'll just jump right into the function and code it out. Yeah, sure. Let's say I name my function find intersection. Mm -hmm. Function find intersection. It takes in three arrays. Array one, array two, in array three. Mm -hmm. Let's say the first thing I'm interested in is the actual result. So let me 
um, initialize the results array as an empty array. Mm -hmm. Next thing is we need to keep track of all of the indices, so let me just initialize those. x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0. Mm -hmm. Also, this is pseudocode, so I'm not declaring the variables. Yeah, that's fine. Now, um, we will go into the while loop. So the condition for the while loop would be that the index is not out of bounds for mm -hmm. any of these arrays. So let's say I have a function for that. Uh, that's a detail. I'll take care of that later. Mm -hmm. So I'll say while. Um, not OOB, and that's a function that is giving me a boolean. Mm -hmm. And then I go into the actual if statements or conditions. So the first one is basically if the values at all three, x, y, and z, are the same. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then I push the values to my results array. So mm -hmm. I'll say if array 1x equals array 2y and array 2y equals array 3z. So if this is the case, then I do two things. One is I push the result, so result dot push any of the values, so array 1x. Mm -hmm. Next thing I do is I increment all three of the indices. So x plus plus, y plus plus, and z plus plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Now I'll have else if x or the value at x is less than the value at y. So array, array 1x is less than array 2y. So if this is the case, I will increment x. Mm -hmm. So x plus plus, else if array 2y is less than, as we discussed, array 3z. So in this case, I'll increment y. Mm -hmm. And then if none of these are true, and the only remaining condition is that z is less than both. The value at z is less than both the value at x and y. So I'll say else z plus plus. Yep. That would be it for the while loop. Mm -hmm. So it will stop when the out of bounds uh, is reached, right? Mm -hmm. So let me just return the results first. And now I can take care of the out of bounds function. Mm -hmm. So let's say the out of bounds function is within the find perception function. So it still mm -hmm. has access to all three of the arrays. And I can code it over there. So function OOB doesn't take anything. It just returns uh, the value of one condition. Mm -hmm. That condition is basically, so I'll say return. The value of this condition. The condition is that x is greater than or equal to uh, array one dot length, or y is greater than or equal to array two dot length, or z is greater than or equal to array three dot length. If any of these three is true, then it'll return true, and the while loop will stop. Mm -hmm. So I think this concludes this function. The mm -hmm. time complexities um, of this would be, in the worst case scenario, we're looping through all of the elements of all of the, all of the three arrays. Mm -hmm. So if, um, let's say, the length of array 1 is n1, for array 2 is n2, and n3, then it would be O of n1 plus n2 plus n3. And the space complexity, we're not really using any auxiliary space, so that would be constant. Mm -hmm. What if the input arrays are not sorted? In that case, um, I think there would be a couple of solutions. First one would be that I have three nested for loops. So in that case, 
this algorithm is totally irrelevant, right? Mm -hmm. It would be a whole different algorithm. But um, the time complexity of that would be very bad. Mm -hmm. It would be n1 times n n2 times n3. Uh, the other one uh, which I would do is to sort all three of these arrays first, mm -hmm. right? And if I'm using quick sort, then time complexities of that would be n1 log of n1, mm -hmm. n2 log of n2, n3 log of n3. So in that case, um, I would have, um, let's say all three of these arrays, the size of them is the same. Mm -hmm. Let's say the size of them is the size of the largest one of uh, these three arrays. So, uh, and let's say that is n. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I would have 3n log of n mm -hmm. plus 3n, right? So boils down to just n log of n. So the most time-consuming part of this would be actually sorting the array. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked today's video. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button below and subscribe if you haven't already. And next week, I'll cover a traversal method on graphs that we call DFS, Depth First Search Traversal, which is a very frequently asked interview question at the higher stages in the interview process. So in order to get notified, make sure you hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button below, and YouTube will send you a notification. So this is it for this week and I'll see you next time.